I am so excited about this past month's income report. <laughs> I actually, I haven't hit this number in such a long time. Maybe I've only hit this number once before. I'm so stoked to share this with you in November's income report. Hey, what's up guys? It's Justine with Debt-Free Millennials, the channel to help you crush your debt and live payment free. And today we are talking about my income report from the previous month. Every month I report exactly how much money I've earned in my business because I think it's important to be transparent when you are running an online business, you're a content creator, how much money are you actually earning? What are you spending your money on? What do taxes look like? And so I hope that my transparency is helping you figure out whether or not this is a journey that you think you should be a part of. We should go ahead and talk about the money I made this month because wow, it was insane. Okay, let's start off with Instagram Reels. So Instagram Reels has these Reels bonus play features that you can turn on. So I was already making Instagram Reels anyways, and so I thought, sure, why not make some money at it? But any content creator out there who is doing Reels on Instagram is gonna tell you, they're literally paying like a penny per view. So it's not a money maker. However, I did earn $209 this past month in revenue from Instagram Reels alone, so I thought that was pretty cool. Now, affiliates brought in $516. This really has not been a focus this past year. I've talked about that in other income report videos, and I think after talking with one of my good friends, Andy Hill of Marriage, Kids, and Money, we talked about how you can incorporate more affiliate marketing into your content without it feeling like let me just like shove this down your throat and eat this affiliate marketing for dinner and breakfast and in your mimosas. I don't want it to come across that way, but I do also want to talk about my affiliates that I actually am really proud to work with, such as Survey Junkie. I was just doing a video on Survey Junkie. I really love, if you're gonna do an online survey, which by the way, you don't make a lot of money from taking online surveys. However, you could use it to bolster your Starbucks budget. And so I do find that Survey Junkie is like the best online survey platform out there compared to like Swagbucks or anything like that. So I wanna be able to be a little bit more proficient in affiliate marketing. I'm getting on a tangent. Let's keep going with my revenue. Digital products brought in $498. That includes my budget bootcamp program and my workbook. YouTube brought in $2,247. And drum roll please, because my client work was insane. I brought in $12,125, which means my grand total in November was $15,595 in earned revenue. That is insane. So this past year has been, you know, a roller coaster of revenue. Literally every other month I would have a bad month. Every other month I would have a good month. And I wasn't really hitting the five figure months consistently. This definitely rounds out the year very, very well. And I wanna show you what the November business budget looks like and then how that's reflective of the revenue that I've earned for this past year and see exactly how much money I've earned thus far. November is usually a big expense month for me as well because I have a lot of subscriptions that renew during this time. So let's go over that. Had all my normal subscriptions with G Suite, Photoshop, ConvertKit, Deadline Funnel. Calendly was paid out for my annual subscription of $103.20. Okay, so saving about $8.50. I'm gonna update this. So it's $8.50 now. They did increase the price of Calendly. And I use Calendly to schedule out my budget bootcamp calls automatically. So when you sign up for a budget bootcamp, you're taken to my calendar and then you get to pick a time that works best for you and works best for me and then we meet together. So I really do love that tool. Um, SiteGround hosting for my website was paid out $179.88. So it does appear that I need to increase 
my sinking fund savings, wow, to $15. That's a big jump, $15 per month. That's up $3, so $36 in the year, hmm. Makes me wonder if SiteGround is worth keeping for hosting right now. Okay, then I had Zoom and then Teachable also was paid out. So those are three annual subscriptions that were paid in full for November. Teachable, 348. I host all my digital products on Teachable. Really like it, really like that they continue to enhance that platform. So I'm definitely going to keep it. WeWork Days, I paid out $265. That actually is the last month that I will be paying for that because I ended my contract with them. And then my labor and contractors, I paid out my thumbnail guy again. And then I had some web, web maintenance, $85. Honestly, like they did get the website up and running for now, but I feel like he didn't really give me some good recommendations as to what to do next. So I don't know if I'm gonna work with this guy anymore. Client gifts, I spent about $90 on spending money on Christmas gifts for my clients. I also set aside $200 for travel and conferences because I noticed I spent a lot of money at FinCon in September. So I wanna be mindful of that for next year. And then I also added a new future savings goal for my web design slash rebranding that I really wanna do. So I set aside $50 for that. So you heard me say my revenue was $15,595. What actually hit my bank account this past month was $96.72. I had $2,300 in expenses. It was a big expense month. I also set aside just $120 for the SEP IRA. I was putting $1,000 towards it, but with the move and my income just feeling really tight, I was like, Ugh. So I didn't contribute to the SEP IRA in October at all. This month I just put just a little bit, <laughs> just to make myself feel better. And that's okay. You can absolutely do a small contribution one month if you just need to build it up and get comfortable again with making those contributions. All that said, I set aside $2,586 for taxes, which means my after-tax take-home was $4,597.88. So if we go over to my 2022 year, here is where I total up all of the revenue, income expenses, deductions, profit, after-tax profit, all of that stuff right in one window so I can see this. This is also really helpful for me to see when I'm working with my CPA on my tax return. So, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize this. I actually did hit 15K back in March Sweet, so I did hit 15K twice this past year. That's awesome. That, this past month actually brought my total revenue over 100K. And I said in my last video that I needed to average $8,900 for November and December in order to make that happen. And done, like I'm not even worried about December because I know I will end the year on a really good note. So this is what all this looks like. And if you remember uh, back in the beginning of the year, I had set a goal for $125,000 in revenue and my stretch goal was 150. Definitely not gonna make 150, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna make 125. But even if I made, you know, $8,000 for December, that brings my total rev to 112, almost 113. So I'm really, really happy with that. I am such a high achiever and sometimes I think I overdo it. So if I overshoot the shot, then I come back disappointed. So I'm actually really happy with where things are landing. Okay, let's talk about some of the obstacles I experienced in Thanksgiving. The first thing is, is I ended my contract with WeWork. The new WeWork location in LA is just, it's it's close by enough, I still have to drive, but the parking situation is insane. They wanted to charge like an extra 120 a month for parking next to WeWork when I already paid 265 for the actual space. And I just thought, you know, this isn't worth it. So I parked off-site 
and then I would have to walk about six to eight minutes back over to the building. So I was like, this is annoying. Plus I was feeling a little worried about the extra $265 in expenses and I thought that was something I could remove so that I could get the income up and minimize my expenses. That being said, the obstacle now is because we have an in-home nanny who takes care of my daughter, we are constantly shuffling when I can be out here recording and when they are at the park and outside. And I also have to film before and after naps, usually before naps. So this has kind of been a challenge and a struggle and I'm still trying to figure it out. Also Thanksgiving kind of put a wrench in the YouTube content calendar. So I got behind in recording my videos. I wanna make sure that I get ahead of my content calendar so that I feel like, okay, things are scheduled out. I'm also struggling with where to make and publish content because it gets a little overwhelming. The bulk of my content is on YouTube and I will forever prioritize YouTube and then to add on to that to reach different audiences, I'm dabbling with Instagram and TikTok. And I think this is where I get a little overwhelmed is that I feel like I have to make a piece of content for YouTube and Instagram Reels and Instagram Stories and TikTok and TikTok and TikTok. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, can I take one idea and and then replicate it across some multiple platforms. So something I'm experimenting with, I love, and I'm trying to get back to the reasons why I like creating on Instagram and TikTok versus what's expected of me. Trying not to publish content there for the wrong reasons. And I think one of the wrong reasons would be, oh, I wanna, increase my followers and I want to increase my followers because I want brands to notice me so that I can get sponsorships so that I can make money. When I really need to get back to the purpose of why I'm creating content, which is to educate millennials on how to crush debt and live payment free. Yes. I think that's, I just need to get back to my why, why I am creating content. Okay, let's talk about the wins. Obviously, the biggest win here is I had a hella big revenue month, like hella big revenue month. That is insane. It feels like a big boost in my confidence with the business. It feels like, ah, oh, yes, I can do this. Like, I am going to do this. I am doing this. So it feels good to know after five years, I still got it and I can still make good revenue months like that. I'm also working on a monthly membership. So I had polled Instagram whether or not they wanted to do a monthly membership and actually majority of people said no, but when I polled my email list, which uh, are filled with subscribers who actually like follow me and are part of my community, 55% said yes, that they would be interested in a monthly membership. And this would look like a, a text messaging subscription. So literally you and I are texting back and forth. I talked about this in the last video, texting back and forth about your financial situation, your goals, your obstacles and challenges. And then I get to answer you back right away with some education and my thoughts on your situation. I think it's really fun. So I'm definitely wanting to pursue that. Be on the lookout for that. I think I'm going to try to push that either January. Yeah, probably January. I was going to say February, but I was like, no, let's commit. <laughs> let's commit to January. So that's what I want to do. All right. Also the financial wellness program page is live, but also the promo video has been recorded and it's currently in editing. So I recorded a really quick two to three minute promo video that will live on that landing page so that when HR professionals, or maybe you who works for a corporate company, you want to introduce financial wellness into your workplace, you get to see my face, I get to introduce myself and talk about what are some things that we could do during the workshop. So if that's you or you're interested in having me as a guest speaker at your company, I will leave a link in the description box for the financial wellness workshop for you to check out. So I also started to reach out to some contacts about the program and getting some nibbles here and there, but with the holiday season upon us, I feel like people aren't really prioritizing this. So I have a feeling January might 
help speed things up. I have a call with one of my friends in my mastermind group to talk about sales. And I think that'll be the theme for next year. And my business is just working on sales and getting better at pitching myself, not just with the corporate program, but in all facets of my of my business. I feel like I could do a better job of selling the things that I have to offer through my platforms. That said, I also recorded two podcast interviews, one with Andy of Marriage, Kids and Money. He also has a YouTube channel, so definitely go check that out. And I also recorded with Wincrease team. Uh, Dwayne over at Wincrease team invited me on his podcast. He also has a YouTube channel, so definitely go check that out. I had so much fun talking with the two of them on their podcasts. Once those are out, I will be sure to link to that on Instagram stories so that you can check it out. Okay, and lastly, I talked about setting some end of year goals and I wanna give you an update on this past month how I've been able to reach that. The first goal that I had was to reach 65,000 YouTube subscribers. That is probably not going to happen and that's okay. I just crossed 59,000 subscribers. So if you aren't subscribed to the channel, why not? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button. You're going to join the community of 59,000 plus members who are committed to living debt free, crushing their debt. Do it. I think I will be really happy. I know I'll hit 60K by end of December. So I'm really happy. I got really close to that. Another thing that I talked about incorporating was uh, doing weekly sales emails. So again, working on the sales stuff. And I have to say, as I was testing this out, so I've been sending out those sales emails uh, Tuesday, every Tuesday or Wednesday to people who have not purchased digital products from me. So not everybody on the list uh, gets this email. That has not really done anything. I've seen literally zero sales from the day that I send the email. I saw on the second week, I had one workbook sale that day. Uh, but weeks one, three, and four, I've seen nothing. Although week four, I just recently pushed an email about my investing for kids activity book, which is available on Amazon. I checked my author central Amazon page and I did not see any numbers reported for that day. In fact, they only report sales per week. So maybe if there's an uptick in sales that week, maybe I could contribute some credit towards the sales email, but it's hard to tell and I won't be able to find out until next week. Also, I talked about publishing four reels per week. That's going well, except this past week, uh, my nanny was out sick, so uh, I had to take care of my daughter, which prevented me from really creating the content. So yeah, it's kind of working, kind of not. I have incentive to keep doing it because at least I'm getting paid <laughs> a little bit from Facebook on those Instagram reels. And I also made the goal to create that web design and rebranding fund. So I funded $50 towards that goal. So that's a look at my goals, my revenue for the month, some of my challenges, and what I'm thinking about for next year. If you enjoy these videos still, and it's helping you just to get a little bit of insight of what this looks like, uh, being a full time content creator, please, please, please give this a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I will catch you next month for the final month in 2022, what my revenue actually turned out to be. Bye.